Hey everyone, this is Brady, the Game Dev Artisan. In today's video, we're going to continue our series on the Godot Fundamentals. We'll cover adding audio to our game to improve the overall feel. We'll look at the audio bus layout, adding audio via the audio stream players, and controlling our custom bus volumes from our UI. So first, let's look at our overview for our audio server under the Audio tab at the bottom. Here you'll see your default bus layout, which contains your master bus. This is here by default. Now for our game, we'll be adding a music bus as well as a sound effects bus. This is useful for controlling the different audio levels for our sound effects in our game, as well as the background music at different levels. To add an audio bus, you can click the add bus option and rename it to music. And here we can see a slider for our decibel level. This can adjust the volume for the overall bus. You can also control where this bus connects to via this drop down at the bottom. Here, all of the buses will track back to the master bus, which will be controlled on a single audio level. You can also add effects to an individual bus. Let's go ahead and add a second bus that we'll call SFX. It's important to know the ordering of your buses within the default bus layout. The initial will always be your zero index or the master bus. And then we have our music bus, which is the first index and the SFX bus, which is our second index. This is important when referencing it in code. Now let's add our audio assets to our folder by creating a new audio folder. And inside here, we'll set it up for music as well as sound effects. Feel free to use the provided audio and music from our project within GitHub. You can also create your own. For my sound effects, I'll be using Chiptone by SFB Games on itch.io. Here it has generators for different types of sounds, such as coin, zap, boom, jump, one up, lose, hurt, and blip, all with individual modifiers that can change the sound to your liking. An alternative to this is the JSFXer, which is a port in JavaScript of the original SFXer by Dr. Petter, also containing a variety of different options to modify the sound. And all of these, you can download the WAV file. And for the background, I'll be using the white frame by Roll Music on the freemusicarchive.org. And as always, links to all this are in the description below. We can take a look first at our music track. If we double click to re-import, we can select the loop mode to enable. This will cause our background track to continuously play. And we can re-import that. Next, let's add our background music to our game by adding a child node of audio stream player. And for this, let's make sure we select our bus to be the music bus. And we can drag over our music into the stream. Now in my testing, I found that the volume on this is quite loud. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down by about 20 decibels. That'll make it pretty quiet and should be better for you as the audience. Adjust this to your needs. Also note that we'll be controlling our volume later in our UI. First, we'll go into our weapon scene within our tank. We'll go ahead and add an audio stream player for our weapon that will use the sound for when we fire. Now this is a sound effect, so make sure it goes under your sound effects bus. Within our weapon script, let's go ahead and drag a reference using our control click. We can just rename this audio player. Now that we have a reference to our audio stream player within our script, we can add it whenever we fire around. Applying the sound right after we create our bullet is a perfect time. Here we can say audio player dot play. That'll begin playing our sound whenever we fire. Next, let's go to our crate scene and we'll go ahead and add an audio stream player as well. And just like before, we can click and drag this over, hold control. Let's go ahead and rename this to audio player as well. Now, one thing to note with our crate is whenever we destroy our crate, we queue this to be freed. An important note on queuing to free, that will prevent your audio player from actually continuing to play the audio once it's been queued to be free. So prior to queuing it to be freed, we want to tell our audio player to go ahead and play its sound, but then we want to await the audio player finished signal to be completed. This means that once our audio is done playing, then we will queue free to destroy this crate. And once that all occurs, our pickup will then be created. Now with this, there will be a delay between the time we call destroy and the actual pickup being created and the crate disappearing from our scene. 
this is a great opportunity to add animation, which we'll do in a later video. Next, let's go to our pickup scene. We'll do the same thing. Add a child node for our audio stream player. Drag this into our script. We'll rename that to audio player. And again, if the body is type tank and we're going to collect this pickup, then we're going to use our audio player and we're going to play that sound effect. We also would like to wait for the auto player to finish its signal and then we will queue it free. So to do this, we must say that we're awaiting that signal. Also a quick note on your game, for the background music, make sure you set it to auto play. And also on your crate, ensure that you have your crate breaking sound effect. And for your pickup, make sure you have your pickup sound effect on your audio stream players. And if we run our game, we can hear our background music. We can hear our gunfire. And if we shoot a crate, we pick up. We can hear all our sound effects are working. Next, we'll add the ability to control our bus's volume individually with sliders. To do this, let's open up our UI scene. And inside our control node, we'll be adding a new control node that we will call menu. We switch to our 2D view, scroll out, and make sure that the anchors use up the full rectangle. And for this, we're going to also add a color rectangle that is going to span the full view. We'll set this to kind of a darker shade of gray with a little bit of transparency. Also overlaid on top of that menu, we'll add a margin container, full rectangle. For the theme overrides, we'll add our constants for our margin left and margin right. We'll set this to about 256 pixels on both sides. And inside that, we'd like a V box. Here you can see that we've somewhat centered our container. Now inside this VBox, we'll set up a grid container. Now ensure that your VBox is set up to a line in the center, that it also spans vertically across the full height. And we'll make sure our grid container is centered to do the same. For horizontal alignment, you'll want to make sure it fills from left to right. Now inside our grid container, we'll be adding a label as well as a slider for both our sound effects bus and our background music bus. We can do this by adding a child node of type label. We'll call this our music label. And inside our container, we'll also add a slider that runs horizontally. And for this, we'll call this our music slider. For our music label, we can just label it music. Also notice for our grid container, we would like to set this to two columns. And then for our slider, we will set the layout to stretch horizontally and expand from left to right. We can center it along the vertical alignment to shrink to center. And inside our music slider, under the layout, we can make sure that the container sizing for that shrinks to the center. That'll nicely align our slider with our label. And to space things out a little bit, under the grid containers theme overrides constants, we can add a horizontal separation of about 16 pixels. Now we'll be mapping our slider's value from 0 to 1. So when we select this, we'll want to make sure that our min value is 0 and our maximum value is 1. Now the step size for our slider We'll do this in about 0 0.05 or about a 5% increment. Our default value will be 100%, which is one. We can go ahead and check that. And you can see our slider will default be all the way up. We can copy our label and slider into our container. Rename this one to our sound effects label. Change the text to say SFX. And for our sound effects slider, it'll have the same settings. 
Next, we need to attach our signals to our UI script. This will allow us to automatically adjust the bus volume based off the value of the slider. So to do that, we'll take our music slider, go to our node tab. We'll select our range signal of value changed. We're gonna go ahead and connect that to our UI script. It'll create our new on music slider value changed. And in this case, we'll want to use our audio server and we'll be calling the set bus volume decibel. This requires a bus index, which currently we don't have a variable for. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. At the top, we'll set a couple of on ready variables, one for our sound effects bus. We'll set that ID equal to the audio server dot get bus index. And here we can pass in the name of our bus. In this case, SFX. We go ahead and copy that. Do the same thing for our music bus. Now we can use these variables inside our function call to set that bus volume. Now we'll be setting this to a decimal value that is coming from a linear value from our slider. Godot has a nice function called linear to db, which will take in a linear float value in our case from zero to one, and it will convert that to a decibel value. Now we also would like to mute our audio servers bus by using the set bus mute function, passing in our music bus ID. And in this case, we wanna say that our bus is muted if the value of our slider is less than a threshold. So we'll say if it's less than that 0 0.05, which is a single step. If it's anything less than a single step, we want to go ahead and mute our audio bus. We can repeat this step for our sound effects slider, connected to the same UI script, and we'll just copy over our audio server set volume and set mute functions, but change our music bus to our sound effects bus ID. Everything else can be left the same. Now that we've created this UI, we want to be able to toggle that using a simple input of our escape key. So we'll use the input function and we'll check if our event is of type action pressed UI cancel. By default, that is set to our escape key. And if that's the case, we want to take our menu, which we'll extract to a variable called menu. We can do that by right clicking, setting this as a unique name. Dragging that in, holding control, and now we've bound the menu control node to our variable, and we are going to set the visible property equal to the inverted menu.visible. This is called a toggle statement. This will take the current state of visibility, whether it's true or false, and it will invert it to the opposite. So if it's true, this will say it's not true, which is equal to false. This is a very common practice for toggling the Boolean state of a Boolean variable. And with that, we can go ahead and test our game. We can see our sliders. And if we drag our music down, we can hear that our music gets quieter. And if we test with our escape key, we fire around, our sound effects are much louder. If we open up our menu, drag down our sound effects, we can hear they're pretty quiet. And if we ting them all the way down, we're back to what we had before. Oh, looks like we forgot something. The keen among you may have noticed that when we set up our crates audio stream player, we forgot to set the bus to our sound effects as well as our pickup. And lastly, if we return to our UI and we toggle our menu's visibility to default the not visible, when we run our game, the menu will no longer show up initially and will require us to press escape. And once again, if we fire up our game, open our menu, we can turn down our music and our sound effects. And if we fire, 
Clean here. The sounds are much quieter. We have our music completely muted. We can completely mute our sound effects. And the sounds are gone. And there we go. We successfully added audio to our game. We've isolated our music and our sound effects to their own dedicated bus. And we've allowed ourselves to control the audio of those individual buses using our UI. And remember that you can always learn more about the audio system by reading Godot's official documentation. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And stay tuned for future videos as we continue to expand on what we can do within the Godot game engine. Thanks for watching and happy coding.